turn it over to Greg. I'd like to turn it over to Greg Silvestri, Vice President of Service for Kia America. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark. And it's my pleasure to be, it's my pleasure to be here to represent uh, Kia America. Um, you know, over the last 14 years, Kia has proudly won the title of official automotive partner of the NBA. And basketball is an incredible and exhilarating game. And during our time together, both the league and the Kia brand have grown incredibly. You know, at Kia, we understand that environmental sustainability is one of our most valuable assets. And that's why we're investing $25 billion over the next five years to deliver 11 new electric vehicles across the, the world. And just as Kia is recognized as a leader in performance and design, the Kia Performance Awards distinguish the MBA's highest achievers. So today, it's my distinct honor to present Nikola Kovic, Kokic, I'm sorry, uh, of the Denver Nuggets with the 2020-2021 Kia NBA Most Valuable Player of the Year Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's an honor. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Cody Wise for a Q&A session. Thanks, Mark. We'll go ahead and get started here and open up with Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. Congratulations. Um, earlier this year, you, you said that you've been an underdog your whole life. My question is, can you still be an underdog if you're the NBA MVP? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. Hopefully, if you, hopefully you can. <laughs> hopefully you can. I mean, uh, being an underdog is something that... Uh, like I said, I, I was my, my whole life, uh, so it's something that I really kind of, it's really nice to, to no, nobody believes in you, so it's throwing people wrong, you know, surprising the world. Next, we'll go to Jacob Toby, Nine News. Hey, man, I, I know during the season you got a lot of questions about being involved in it and, and Rightfully so, you know, you brush it away, but now that it's official, can you at least take a little bit of a, of a time and, and realize, you know, that big of an accomplishment? Yeah, I mean, yes, of course, it's a, it's a big of accomplishment, but it's something that, uh, like I said to the guys, it's, it's not just me, you know, I came here six, seven, how many years ago? Six years ago. Uh, and... Uh, I was growing, the core organization growing, the coaching staff were growing, the players next to me were growing. So um, I couldn't do it by myself, you know. So uh, it's something that uh, it's it's individual award, but uh, it's effort of everybody who was a part of Denver Nuggets organization. So it's it's a big it's a big it's a big thing, but it's. It's not just my. It's not just my award. It's a award of everybody who work uh, for me and with me. With that in mind, congratulations, first and foremost, Nicola. I want to ask, though, what do you think this award means to this franchise and to this fan base and to the city of Denver? I mean. I, 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 when I came here see, again six years ago, we didn't have that much fans, you know, and uh, I like how the people appreciate the, the, the effort that we put as an organi organization as uh, every year, year, every year, we are trying to be better and every year there is more and more, actually two, three years ago, every night is a sellout. So uh, I like how people are appreciate what are we doing and what are we trying to become. So it's really, it's really nice to, to have those kind of fans and those kind of people uh, cheering for you. Harrison Wynn, DNVR. Hey, Nicola, uh, congrats, of course. Um, what do you think this award is going to mean to uh, your hometown of Sambor, um, the people in Serbia? 
what do you think this type of award is going to mean to them and what impact do you think it could have on you know your community your home uh, I, I to be honest i don't know probably i'm gonna feel it when i go home uh, i'm gonna feel what it really means but what i really want to mean is that uh, kids are going out and play basketball they need to play basketball they can play whatever sport they want to play just the people go outside and play sports you know i think that's if I do, if I do that for the kids back home, I think that's going to be my biggest uh, accomplishment to the I did in, 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 in sports, you know. So just to, uh, just to, uh, put the kids out again and uh, make them play sport, you know, any kind of sport. Alex Labado, Nuggets.com. Hi, Nicole. I have two questions for you. One, we saw you, you know, talking to your family about the award. What was their reaction? And, and then number two, uh, did you have a sense when, when, when uh, you were going to potentially win this award or did it, was it a surprise up until the end? I, I, I never thought about it. Like even, uh, even when uh, the season was over, I was into it. I was into Portland series. So I was, I was trying to get his, uh, my, my focus was on that, you know, so I was not even, uh, I didn't have time, like I, I didn't want to even think about it uh, because it's just a trophy, you know, and the season is still, uh, it's not over. So I was just, uh, I was just trying to put my focus on the games. And uh, yeah, my family, yeah, but they, they, they live uh, every game with me. They, they live uh, every moment, every practice with me. So uh, they, they, they are probably the most happy, uh, happy, uh, family right now you know so um and like i said they, they are with me since my since my day one you know i will say my, my dad who brought me to the practice uh, first time even though i cried uh, my then my mom who is always next to me who is always in my mind who is always talking to me uh uh like some kind of tele, 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 telepathy, telepathy is that how you say i don't know uh, my wife, who is with me, and she, she's living every day with me, and my, my, my brothers, who who really wanted to be uh, NBA players, but they uh, they didn't. But uh, they show me how what to do and what not to do. So it's uh, it's uh, really uh, it's a really thing that I uh, it's uh, it's uh, I say I cannot I'm I'm thanking like I said I'm thanking them because I, I got a trophy, but I need to thank them every day uh, what they're doing for me, so. Cosmider, The Athletic. Hey, Nicola, congratulations. Um, just wanted to follow up on that. You talk about your, your brothers who have been here with you ever since you joined the NBA. You know, they're, they're I think, 10 or 12 years older than you. And, and you talked, you just said, they help me know what to do and what not to do. What has just been the biggest impact that they have had over the course of your career in terms of just, you know, just giving you that sense of home or, or whatever it might be, um, you know, every day? Uh, it's not just sense of home, you know. First of all, my, my, my younger brother was in America seven years uh, before that when I came. So he was, uh, he was here before. So uh, he, he was... Uh, he know how everything works in, in in America, you know. And my older brother was uh, last year actually living with me in Belgrade, and uh, we 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 came as a group, you know. And my my girlfriend that moment, the wife, uh, came uh, three four months after 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 um, I came here because we had visas and whatever, and she was in college and then that, that moment. Uh, uh, just uh, when you have uh, that kind of group, group that always stick together, no matter what is good is bad, and uh, just the people, uh, the the, the uh, their thoughts and their how smart they are and how uh, I say uh, they're gonna do whatever is you they need to do. So I I, I feel good, you know. Uh, when you have that kind of group with yourself and we came together as a group, you know, and they, then the Nuggets meet, as, meet, uh, meet me as my family, you know, as a group of people, 
uh, we will show that there is nothing that can go be, be, uh, in, uh, between us. You know, we are we are as a one. You know, so that's something that we are uh, taking a lot of pride in that uh, coming together as a group and staying the, uh, the the group the whole time. Any Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey Nicole, is there any any relief that this is over and you don't have to don't have to talk about it or won't have to answer questions about it anymore? To be honest, yes. We'll go to Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey Nicola, congratulations. When you look back at where you started before entering the league to where you are right now, what would you say to your younger self and big men from all over who look up to you? Oh, play the game. Uh, just enjoy it. Uh, because at that moment, I never thought I'm going to do something big in basketball. I was just trying to, to, to play basketball, you know, so just play, enjoy the game if you love it, you know. If you don't love the back of the game, just find something that you love. Matt Moore, Action Network. Congratulations, Nicola. Want to ask uh, of the people that have reached out so far, whether it's teammates or front office or anyone else, has there been any, anyone that's reached out that's really touched you or has been important for you to hear from today? I mean, my my family when they they called me that was nice because like i said they're with me every day so uh, my mom my dad my family my really good friends back home so it's something that it's always nice to to, to see the text or the call that they're thinking about you go to crystal saltus sdna greece Hello, Nicola. First of all, congratulations. It's a great season for Serbian basketball because you are the MVP of NBA. Vasa Misic is the MVP of EuroLeague. So my question to you is, if you look back in your childhood, did you expect to be one of the most impactful centers in the NBA and be one of the guys that dominate on the court? And also, how special it was this to create something and win with Denver Nuggets to create your own legacy in that franchise? Like I said, that's, that's a great, great thing that... When I came here, we are we are not that good. I can say it like that. You know, we are we had 30 wins, and uh, every year since since that we are have more wins, and we are growing, uh, and we are better and better every in, even even in postseason, even in playoffs. So so that's something that it's really cool, and I think it's really be uh, it's nice to be a Denver Nuggets fan right now. Uh, since I mean about uh, Vasa and uh, how he won uh, Euro League MVP, I play with him of course, and I uh, I actually play a couple of years, two three years two years with him was it, and uh, to be honest uh, he he's a completely different person and he completely different player now uh, now and then now he's uh, he's know what he's doing he's much better he's. Uh, even as a person, he can be compared. Uh, but funny thing about him, me and Vasa, uh, so Ognjen Stojakovic, who is uh, assistant, who is development coach here, uh, skills coach, whatever. Uh, I was I was working uh, with him since my day one, and Vasa is actually working with him. I actually met Ogi before NBA through Vasa, through Vasa, Vasa was working over him. So that's a kind of cool story. So Augie has a two MVPs right now in his uh, in his uh, books. Brandon Cristal, KOA Radio. Nicola, congratulations. You join a pretty rare list of guys like John Elway, Peyton Manning, Terrell Davis. I think Larry Walker is the only Rocky. And then Joe Sackick and Forsberg are the only MVPs for the Avs. Do you allow yourself to think about where you stand in, in Denver sports lore uh, or, you know, the history of the city of Denver? To be honest, uh, I don't know much about history of city. I, I, I remember Peyton Manning. Uh, mm, 
Nate McKinnon is playing. He's all star right now. He's he's two two, two time all star, isn't it? He's playing really well. The Avs are playing really well, of course. I wish them I wish them all like actually watching the games. I'm really into hockey right now because I think it's a great sport. Uh, it's really dynamic and I, I, li- I like the Avs. What are Avs doing for the city of Denver? But I think we we don't need to compete. I I don't compete with anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm just. Uh, Happy that we have so much uh, support in the city and people can enjoy it in so much so much areas. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey Nicola, uh, we know how much you worked and how much work you put in um, on a daily basis this year. How, how big a point of pride it was for you to play all seventy-two games this year. When you look back at this season. Can you can you kind of pinpoint your motivation? Can you pinpoint where your drive came from this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, as, uh, in about uh, so everything started like uh, two years ago, is it? Or year year and a half ago? So Babu, that's last year. Yeah, year and a, let's say year and a half ago, when I or two years ago it doesn't matter. When I when I was in a car with Felipe and. Uh, uh, I tried to. I told him I want to lose weight, uh, uh, and just to see can I do it. You know, I think it can help me. I will sacrifice a couple of games just to. I know I didn't. I will not have energy. Mm, I will maybe play bad, but I'm gonna sacrifice a couple of games just for for the future. You know, so. And uh, he was next to me, and he was a. Uh, he, he, he was with me, you know, in, in that journey, uh, and uh, the whole bubble experience. It was uh, we played really good. Of course, we 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 made a history, and then we had a two 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 months off, and the next season it came. So in, I think the biggest biggest thing that, uh, for me was just I started the season really well. Usually I'm kind of building up, not on purpose. It just happened like that. Uh, but uh, I think this season I, I just started the season really well and. Uh, that that good start, like, lead me through 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 whole season, you know. And even now, I think I'm 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 I'm, I'm playing really good basketball, and hopefully hopefully that's going to continue to next seasons. So I didn't answer your question because I don't I don't so I don't know what what motivated me. Uh, it's just I don't know. I don't know what 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 motivated me. I really don't know. David Chinolato, La Gazeta Sport. Uh, hey, Nicola, congratulations for the win. Um, what what is for you being the MVP, being the best player of the season? What does it mean for you? It just uh, it's accomplishment that. Uh, uh, show me that I'm doing a good job, you know, of uh, playing basketball. You know, uh, we are trying, uh, we are that I'm doing something that uh, people recognize. You know, so it doesn't like doesn't affect me that much, to be honest. You know, when I when I see the list, of course, it's a great name. It's a it's an honor to be on that list, but I never even thought that I'm going to be on the list. I, you know, it's a surprise, but uh, it's something that uh, I'd rather again win a championship than uh, than than win an MVP. So there is always a maybe that's my motivation: win really, a championship. I don't know. All right, we have time for one more question. We will end with Jacob Toby, Nine News. A two-parter for you. One, how cool was it to hear Shaq say you brought the big man back? And then two, what's it like for you to be part of this this growth of European players coming over here and, and succeeding so well? You know, you, Giannis, Luca, et cetera. Uh, I mean, of course, I think the even back in days when Lada, Lada Divac and Pajas Tarkovic and uh, Dirk and all of them, I remember Hida Turkoglu and there is a lot of Draja Petrovic, of course, uh, were coming to, uh, to, 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 to and open up kind of the, the way to European players. 
uh, for coming to, to the United States and play basketball. Uh, I think the, the European uh, player, players can, uh, not European, just the players around the world can offer something uh, different, you know, and something, uh, especially the, the, the players who play, um, let's say, EuroLeague, because it's a little bit more, uh, uh, not focus, it was just discipline basketball, I think, personally. And uh, they can they can offer a lot much a lot more uh, of discipline in this in today's NBA. I think. What was the first question? Oh, uh, Shaq. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I mean look at Giannis is uh, like six ten and he he's playing three four, but he's a big man, you know. So Joel Embiid is the okay center. Uh, I'm a center, but. I think uh, even just just uh, position is something that decide you. You know, it's not like look at even LeBron. He's like he's a big big guy. You know, so I don't think so. Just by position, you know, big men are dominating the league. Me personally, think, uh, of course, there is a lot of Steph, James, uh, James, Steph, James Harden, but um, there is a. Uh, a lot of bigs that dominate dominating the league. Nicola, congratulations once again. Greg Silvestri, I'd like to thank you for your time as well this evening representing Kia. Thank, thank you. Thank have you. a good night, everybody. Thank you. If the media wants to hang tight, we'll have Coach Malone joining us here shortly. Congrats again, Nicola. Great job. to ask, where'd you get that shirt from? Oh, where'd I get this shirt from? First question out of the box. Uh, well, we have some great friends uh, of the program over at Tall Tees that uh, through help of Felipe and Nick O'Hare uh, created them. It's a tremendous shirt. Uh, I'm sure they'll be selling all over Denver in the coming days and weeks. Um, but it, it speaks to all the things that were said about Nicola before he won this uh, obviously MVP award, second round pick, uh, not athletic enough, can't play defense, bad attitude, all those things. And uh, on the back of the shirt, it says MVP and the joke's on you. Um, so if you make me an offer, Mike, I'll see if I can hold one for you. We'll go to Vinny Benedetto, Denver Gazette. Hey Michael, just given all the all the adversity this team has has come across this season, would would the success in the position that you guys are in now be possible if Nikola was um, the kind of superstar that that really cared about his stats and really cared, you know, put a priority on getting his 25, 12 and 8 every night? No, uh, I I think that the greatest thing I can say about Nikola uh, is that he fully represents the culture we have created here in Denver. You know, I've been here for 6 years. Uh, and to see the growth of our program, uh, and obviously that definitely coincides with the growth of Nikola Jokic. Uh, last three years in the Western Conference, the Denver Nuggets had the most wins in the Western Conference, 147. That doesn't happen without Nikola improving, and more importantly, as he's improved, so is everybody around him. And you guys have heard me say countless times, the reason why Nikola, in my opinion, is a great player is he makes everyone around him better. We saw that all season. We've seen that for six years now. We saw that in the first round against Portland. So uh, if Nicole was all about me, 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 we wouldn't have had the success. And I don't know if he would have had the success. Uh, he is totally selfless. Uh, one of the more understated superstars uh, in recent memory. Uh, and as I told him today, I love him and feel really fortunate to not only coach him, but to have the relationship that I have with him, because it is a special relationship uh, and one that, uh, that that I enjoy having with him. Go to Katie Wingy. Hey, Coach. You've been to Sambor. You visited his family, his hometown. I I'm wondering if you can just paint a picture of just how remarkable it is that he's the player that he is, that he's grown as much as he has given his background, given the basketball player he was to the point that he is now? Yeah, I mean, to your point, Katie, it's really a remarkable. Uh, we were, after we were 
in the film room today, uh, we were on the bus going over to practice and we were sitting there on the bus talking for 20 minutes. And, and he was kind of talking about all the people in his life that have helped him get to this point long before making that journey over to the United States, uh, name um, his mother and father, right? Uh, his brothers, Nemanja and Strahina, his wife, Natalia, uh, his godfather, Baga. He's had so many people that have helped shape the young man and player that he's become that have allowed him to continue on this journey. Uh, and it's funny, uh, you mentioned me going over there and I didn't know Nicole was gonna be an MVP. Uh, we, we came to Denver the same time. My first summer league as a head coach in Denver was also Nicola's first summer league in Denver. Uh, and I tell you right now, I bet you Nicola didn't think he'd ever be an MVP and none of us thought he'd be the eventual MVP. Uh, but through a lot of hard work and dedication, he's made that happen. Um, when I go over to Serbia, it's always about getting a chance to know him, know his family, uh, understand uh, where he's from and who he's around and what's important to him. Uh, and, and I think that's why we have that special relationship. The time away from the court, it's not always about basketball. Player development, to me, is making sure your players know how much you care about them. And, uh, and obviously, uh, that's been the case since day one between Nicole and myself. Jacob Toby, Nine News. Uh, one, Coach, am I allowed to ask you to turn around and show us the back of that for us TV folks, or are you going to make I'm me gonna do buy that. one? That's going to be my drop the mic moment. So okay. I'm, I'm going to save that, you know, for a little bit of a, uh, like a buildup, if that's okay. Got it. Oh, all right, cool. Um, real question for you. W what is it like for you to watch, I mean, this is what, the ultimate success story, right? A guy in the second round, not thought highly of, and to see his growth, you've been there since day one. What is that like for you as a coach? Oh, it's, uh, you take an extreme amount of pride, uh, you know, to play, as I told him, to play a really small part in his uh, development, his maturation, uh, and his ascendancy from being a second round pick, taking 41st, uh, to having a good rookie season. Uh, and I go back, I think it was December 12th, 2016. Uh, that is like a day uh, a, a real important date in Nuggets franchise history. Uh, we had just come off of a six game road trip. We went two and four. We had lost to Dallas by 20 points. I believe it was on a Monday. And I said to myself at that point, why am I fighting this? You know, let's get Nicola back to playing his natural position. And more importantly, let's make Nicola the centerpiece, the focal point of everything we do moving forward. Let's grow with him. And it, it's been amazing to watch his development within that, the team's development within that. And here we are, as I mentioned, I think last three years where I mentioned the number of wins, last four years, we have the second most wins in the Western Conference. That doesn't happen without Nikola Jokic and his willingness to grow up, to improve, to get in shape. All the things that were holding him back earlier, he, he, he knocked all that down. And, and now he's had an MVP season. Uh, and my hope is that this is not his only MVP. I've been fortunate. I was an assistant coach in Cleveland when LeBron won two. Uh, I was able to coach Steph Curry before he won his MVPs. Um, it's an amazing thing to see a guy that talented who brings it every single night. And you can rely upon it. That consistency is so hard. And, uh, and that's why I think Nicola's earned the respect of everyone around the NBA. Next, we we'll go to Alex Labadou, Nuggets.com. Hey, Coach. Um, how big is it for this franchise to finally have its first MVP and for it to be Nikola? Yeah, I think it's tremendous. You know, um, you know, in my six years, we're, we're always trying to build upon the basketball tradition of the Denver Nuggets, whether that's on the court as a team, collective unit, uh, or with the individual awards. Um, and and I, I'm so happy for one Nikola, and then his entire family. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy for all of his teammates, not just this team, but all the guys that have been around him for six years now that have helped develop him, uh, the coaching staff, the front office, our ownership group, and more importantly, our fans. Uh, you know, that, that's one thing when I take a step back and I reflect my first year when I took over a team that won 30 games to my first season, we won 33 to now being a team that made the Western Conference Finals. The fans have been a huge part of that. 
packing Pepsi Center, now Ball Arena, making it the toughest place to play in the NBA. Um, so I, I know when we get back home on uh, Friday night, rather, uh, you know, that place is going to be jumping and our fans can fully celebrate Nicola winning this award because they definitely deserve a, a lot of credit as well. John Keeler, Denver Post. Michael, you talked about the role he's played in this culture and everything you guys have built. What kind of example, never mind his talent and all those gifts, is his work ethic to the younger guys and the guys you kept cycling in to lead this team and what you're trying to build? Yeah, it's, it's been really important. Uh, and you guys have heard me say many times, uh, I feel really fortunate in that regard. Uh, when your best player, who's now an MPP, is your hardest worker, uh, that sets a tone and an example for everyone else. Whether it's a veteran coming in, a new player that's been drafted, whoever it is, when you see, as we're warming up for practice, Nicola not skipping any steps, going through everything hard. When you see after Nicola playing 38 minutes in a hard fought game, then he's the first one to go upstairs into the weight room to do his post game routine. Uh, that example is, is so invaluable to the young players, to the vets, to his teammates. And it's also about, you know, culture is often overused. Culture is something that has to be worked on every single day. And when Nicola has a work ethic and commitment and discipline that he's shown these last couple of years, well, then that allows everyone else to fall in line. So, yes, he's a tremendous player on the court uh, to, to lead a team in points, rebounds, assists four years in a row, which I don't think has ever been done before, is remarkable. But more importantly, Nicola, the person, how humble he is, how selfless he is, and how hard of a worker he is, uh, allows us to have the success on and off the court that we've had. Tim Bontemps, ESPN. Mike, I, Michael, I apologize to change the subject a little bit, but with uh, with game two coming up tomorrow, is there any update on uh, Michael Porter and any of the other injuries that you guys are uh, dealing with at the moment? Yeah, you know, what? I think Michael Porter should be good to go. Um, you know, he got treatment all day today. Uh, had a good conversation with him. So, uh, barring anything unforeseen, I believe Michael should be go, uh, good to go for game two. Uh, Will Barton had another really good day. Um, so, you know, I think he's definitely a possible candidate to uh, play tomorrow. Now, I'm not trying to say that he's definitely going to play. Uh, we have to continue to have those conversations with the training staff. But for me, the eye test watching Will uh, play today, uh, I have a lot of hope that he's able to give us some minutes tomorrow. And if it's not game two, maybe it's game three as we move back to Denver. But that's not guaranteed. Uh, so let's not get too excited. Brandon Cristal, KOA Radio. Coach, I have two for you. One, kind of piggybacking on the culture stuff that Sean asked you about. You said he fits your culture. Does Nicola set the culture? And is the culture emblematic of him? Is that maybe, I mean, I guess, are they hand in hand? Or I don't want to take away from you and what you're trying to do. And then how rewarding is this for everybody that's been championing Nicola all year? All of his teammates, Austin Rivers comes in. All he does is talk about how great Nicola is and Nicola downplays it. So for those guys to see it come to fruition. Yeah, uh, well, regarding the first question, you know, uh, it's been an evolution for Nicola. You know, from year one to year six, he's become a different player, uh, a different person, a different leader, um, and so many different levels. Uh, so, no, I, I think that the culture was set from day one, um, not with, hey, this is Nicola's team. You know, this is something where year one, Nicola was going to be a, a good player for us, but I don't think anyone imagined him taking the steps that he has taken, uh, and we're thankful that he did. Um, so I, I would say the culture was... I, you know, when I got the job taking over a team that had won 30 games, it wasn't about aligning a culture to Nicola's personality. It was the things that were most important to me as a head coach. As those six years went on, obviously, and Nicola matured, became a leader, understood the importance of getting in great shape um, and being the hardest worker and setting the example every day, I think he kind of morphed into that. And, uh, and, and so uh, that was the remarkable thing about it. It was great to see him mature on so many levels, improve on the court. Uh, but then I'm taking a step back saying our best player fully embodies now what we're trying to represent and be about every single day. Um, so that, that, that is obviously something 
uh, that's been fun to watch. Uh, regarding your second question, yeah, I think when, when it was announced today, all of his teammates, you could see the genuine excitement because Nicole is the first one to say this. I'm sure he already told all of you. Um, yes, this is Nicole Jokic winning the MVP, uh, but everyone in the organization shares in that award. Uh, his players, obviously his teammates, guys that have been here, definitely have helped him become the player he is. And he couldn't do all the things he's done without the help of his teammates, the coaches, the training staff, the strength coaches. This is everybody. And that's why we're all so excited because I think we all feel uh, this is a Denver Nuggets award and led by Nikola Jokic. And, uh, and we're thrilled for him, obviously. All right, we got a time for a few more questions here. We'll go to Harrison Wind. Hey, Michael, I think it was in um, maybe Nicola's second season where he said, I would rather um, have an assist than a bucket. Um, and obviously, like that mentality that, that he's had has carried over in every season since. Um, his selflessness, his um, just willingness to play the right way, how unselfish he is on the floor. What kind of impact do you think that could have um, just in the game of basketball down the line when you see a guy like him who is that unselfish as the MVP? Like, what impact do you think that could have for the game or what impact do you think it ho you hope it has? Yeah, well, I think it has the potential to have a huge impact uh, and a very positive impact. Um, you know, I think I'm biased, but, you know, I, I think we as a team try to play the right way. Uh, and being, you know, selfless, being an unselfish team, passing up good shots to get great shots. Obviously, we've seen the San Antonio Spurs for many years do that. The Golden State Warriors do that. Uh, and we're just trying to play the game the right way, led by Nicola. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my, our second year, uh, after we lost that game to Dallas on December 12th, um, everything changed, right? Our identity changed, our vision changed, our future changed. And I think... That's the way the game should be played, Harrison. I think ball movement, passing, cutting, less dribbling, less ISOs, uh, and no disrespect to the teams that play that way. You know, it's what you believe in. But um, I've heard that there are some really good young, talented players coming up. And you hear these young players allude to, well, I pattern my game after Nikola Jokic. I want to I, I wanna be like a Nikola Jokic who can impact the game with my scoring, my rebounding, my playmaking, my leadership. Uh, because he doesn't have any holes in his game. So uh, I think for the young generation coming up, what a great story. Everybody doubted this kid, 41st pick, limited expectations. When he got into the NBA, uh, he's not a good enough defender. He's not athletic enough, um, all those things. And look where he is now. So I think just in general, we've been an underdog team for many years. Nicola represents an underdog in terms of winning the MVP. First nugget to ever do it, first second round pick in modern NBA history to do that. So uh, I think it has the potential, Harrison, to have a huge positive impact for players coming up uh, in this next generation. All right, we'll take one more question and end with Mike Singer. Hey, Michael, um, a couple of weeks ago, you said this was the hardest season uh, of your NBA career and your 20 years in the NBA. Did Nicola's MVP race and the way that this MVP race transpired, did it kind of provide a silver lining uh, uh, to make it more tolerable, to make it more exciting, to, to make it just so you could come in every day and know that, you know, this guy is in the running for the best player in the entire league and make it more palatable in a season that's been taxing on everybody? Yeah, there's no doubt. I, I think even today, you know, um, you know, losing last night, obviously I thought our first half was um, – was a good first half. That second half uh, was not. Obviously, we have to be much better tomorrow night. You know, but you get that news today, you know, and, and for me, if he didn't win it, obviously it would have been a, a huge uproar um, in the Rocky Mountains because it would have been the biggest travesty in a long time. But to just get the official news that Nicole had won the MVP, I think we all took some satisfaction in that and gave us a little pep in our step. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah, we, we didn't play well last night. We have to be better. But look what Nikola Jokic has been able to do. And, and I think what's really important is you just can't look at Nikola winning the MVP this season 
because I think you do him a disservice. I think you have to go back to the 83 days in Orlando. Uh, and for those of us that were there, we understand how hard that was. And to go home for two months, and he never, never took a day off, came back in game shape to start on December 1st, and he played in all 72. And um, we're the only team still alive from the last four teams in Orlando. Uh, that, that is representative of Nicola's toughness, mentally and physically, uh, and, and the fact that he's not easily willing to let go of the rope and give in when adversity strikes. That young man is exhausted, folks. He won't tell you, I'll tell you. He is mentally and physically exhausted right now. Uh, and, and now we have the challenge of trying to find a way to fight through this next round. Um, but yes, it def definitely is a silver lining. It's great that we finally got the news. Uh, and I think the other silver lining was with the, all the injuries that we had, then everybody counts us out, uh, just taking more satisfaction and continuing to prove people wrong. And, and I think we do that better than anybody. Um, so I would agree, Mike, definitely a silver lining. And hopefully we can use that to springboard us a little bit tomorrow night to try to even this series up. All right, coach, that'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you a back. Thanks, coach.